My final question for you, Lars, is do you have any three specific tips for job seekers in terms of elevating their job search? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that's really important, and this is not a novel tip, you've probably read this uh, uh, frequently if you're a job seeker, but uh, your network is really gold. And I think that what's really important is as you approach your career, uh, and this should be, you know, you should be thinking about consciously and actively building your network as part of your job. And that always will. Be. So we talked in one of our earlier questions about learning and the role of learning and the importance of that. Um, you know, I would put that as a second thing for sure, but much like learning has to be a constant aspect of your role as a professional, building your network does as well, because, you know, there's statistics and I, I might be butchering this a bit, but I think you're, you know, 12 times more likely to get into an organization and get an interview if you know somebody there. So that makes a significant difference in the job, you know, in your job search and as you're looking at companies. So if you can have somebody from the organization that can, uh, you know, either vouch for you or, or get your resume in front of a recruiter or even a hiring manager, um, that's really going to increase your odds. Um, and another part is, you know, there's so much pressure to kind of be on uh, social media and have a digital footprint. I think it's important to have a degree of a digital footprint. You want to be findable. Uh, you want recruiters to be able to find you, to be able to learn more about you. And, you know, one of the things that uh, is a tip that I usually recommend, I mean, most recruiters, depending on the nature of the jobs, they're using LinkedIn to source candidates. And so one, you know, pro tip I would, I would suggest to anybody listening is whatever field you're in, consider going into LinkedIn Publisher and writing a blog post in there that just talks about why that field is important to you, why that work is important to you, what you get out of that work. And I think from a, you know, the way that that is set up, if you have that in your summary section of your profile, if a recruiter is viewing your profile, they're gonna see that summary section. And again, in that summary section, make sure that that's written in a way that's gonna get their attention. Um, don't be afraid to actually get uh, a bit personal in there as well. Talk about your, your interests and your passions. I think you never know what uh, somebody reviewing your resume or your LinkedIn profile is gonna connect with. So, you know, you like surfing. You want surf trips. The hiring manager is also going to like surfing. They see that and they're like, oh, cool. You know, he or she likes surfing as well. So we have that in common. I think things like that just allow, give the reviewer more opportunities to connect with you. And then if you embed that blog post about, you know, why you do what you do and what makes you kind of uh, really drawn to that field, I think it allows somebody to get a deeper understanding for, you know, why you would be a fit in a way that a resume or even just a LinkedIn profile isn't. Those are great tips. Thank you for those, Lars. And for the audience also listening, if you have any other tips that will help the job seekers, please leave it in the comment section. And with that, my interview with you, Lars, comes to an end. Again, thank you for taking the time to ask you these questions. I highly appreciate that. And again, for the audience uh, listening or watching, please subscribe to the channel, share this video, and tune in next time for another great interview I'm preparing for you. Lars, thank you again. Have a great day. Thanks for having me on, Meher. Bye.